D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my week in review where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the article that I read to bring you this video, and you can read it for yourself, or you can just watch this video where I'm going to read it to you. Um, now, before I get started, also, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine, we always get shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. So now that that's all out of the way, why don't we go ahead and get started on uh, these three stories. So for my first story of this week, it looks like Madam Web is just adding a lot of good actors, or at least decent, you know, uh, to what is probably going to be a bad movie. We just have to be honest about that. Like, uh, you know, Sony is doing all these Spider-Man movies, but no Spider-Man. And it's very interesting. I'm curious as to where they're going to go with this and everything. So who did they add now? Well, they added, added Adam Scott, and I actually like Adam Scott. I think he's pretty funny. You know, there he is right there with his cute little face. Um, but yeah, no. So let's see what this article said. This is from Deadline, my favorite. So it says, <clears throat> after landing an Academy nomination for his critical, uh, critically hailed uh, role in Severance. I haven't watched it yet. I want to watch it, but I, man, time is just, you know, there's never enough time, you guys. There's never enough time. Okay. Adam Scott looks to have already found his next project. As sources tell Deadline, he is set to join the cast of Sony Pictures' Madam Web starring Dakota uh, Johnson. I also have a question. How are they roping these people in? I mean, is this script that good? Uh, that they're just roping all these people in to be in it like that's that's what I'm wondering like is this script good or is it just uh, you know they're just like hey I want to you know it's like a backdoor into the MCU which I don't think they're going to let <laughs> these characters into the MCU but this day and age I don't know man the MCU just lets anybody in they'll, they'll just do whatever you know also on board are Sydney Sweeney, love her, uh, Celeste O'Connor, she's cool, pretty cool, uh, Isabel uh, Merced, I, I, I don't know how to say her name, um, yeah, uh, she was in on the short list to be Batgirl, uh, Emma Roberts and uh, Tahar Rahim, uh, uh, for director S.J. Clarkson, Matt Shazama, and Burke Sharpless uh, pan to the screenplay with Can uh, Kurum, Kurum, uh, Sanga writing the previous draft. All right, no more hard names. I've decided. <laughs> Sony had no comment on Scott's casting. Of course they didn't. In the comics, Madam Web is depicted as an elderly woman with uh, uh, whatever, Maja Maja Gravis, and thus has connected to a life support system uh, that looked like a spider web. Due to her age and medical condition, Madam Web never uh, actively fought any villains. For that reason, sources have stressed it's possible the project could turn into something else. Insiders say that due to her phys uh, physique, sensory powers, oh, psychic sensory powers, uh, and my illiterate skills, <laughs> she is essentially Sony's version of Doctor Strange. Scott's role in the film is unknown. Now, um, I just real quick before we uh, get into the rest of this, which really just talks about like, uh, you know, uh, you know, not too much. But anyways, okay. Um, it, uh, uh, I don't know uh, that much about Madam Web in terms of the comic books because i mean i did read there was one where she was there's like a spider totem i just remember not liking those because i thought the spider totem was super stupid and everything like, like there's always has to be a spider man and i'm like oh what what's going on here um and then there was like this group hunting down spider-man in the multiverse and i'm like huh this i, I don't know how i feel about this I, I just don't like it um but uh there is a younger version of madam web uh, but it's not um the Madam Web where she's like paralyzed and stuff and in that little wheelchair and everything. Um, and I don't know how I feel about her being this, this Sony's Doctor Strange. I, I don't like how, I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll see. I mean, this could, like I said, this could be really, really good, like the script and stuff, but we have to wait and see. But I'm not going to hold out hope and everything because 
Venom 1. I like Venom 1. I actually like Venom 2 also. The second one, um, the There Will Be Car Let There Be Carnage one was okay. It just wasn't like I don't know. I just feel like if you're going to have Carnage in there, like Venom's, I don't know. And then Morbius, I liked Morbius, but now that I've had time to sit and watch it again, I mean, it's not like overwhelmingly bad. It's just more like a 90s movie. Like the, the plot is like, eh, and everything. It's like, if it came out in the 90s, it would have been like, everybody would have loved it. So it says, Sony is coming off a hot streak with Venom, Let There Be Carnage, making more than 500 million worldwide, while Spider-Man No Way Home was the biggest film of 2021 with 1.85 billion in, in worldwide sales. Scott is coming off the best uh, of the best reviews for of his career on Apple TV Plus series Surveillance uh, Severance, sorry, which rank, uh, racked up 14 nominations including best actor for Scott and best drama series. He also recently uh, wrapped production on a Party Down revival series and then in Who He's Rep. They always put Who He's Rep, which I I mean like I appreciate is that it? Okay. Um so in terms of who he's playing I honestly think he's just going to play the love interest for Dakota Johnson. Um, you know, I mean, I do like him and I think he's funny and everything. And maybe he'll be like the, the comedic character, but I do think he's just going to play the love interest. So like a big nothing kind of character. I'm not saying that uh, Adam Scott is a nothing. I'm saying his character won't be like anything special. We just have to be honest about that. But good for him. And I do, I am interested to see how you know where you know how this this movie pans out i mean i'll probably go and see it just because i always get roped in and everything because i'm like ah, oh, like morbius i was actually excited for morbius and i did like it like i said i mean but i feel like that movie should have came out in the 90s and it probably would have like you know been hailed as this great great achievement in movies but anyways all right. so that is my first story of the day so for my second story of the day it looks like m night Shyamalan is getting another movie made it's called knock at the cabin and it stars ben aldridge and jonathan uh groff i think that's how you say his name um, and I'm assuming they're, uh, they're, uh, they're a couple in this, and I'm assuming that it's just going to be starring these two, because if you remember, M. Night Shyamalan um, did that, uh, what was that, The Visit? It was a very low-budget horror movie, and uh, it made so much money, and it was pretty good. Um, I didn't even know he had directed it. Like, I wasn't paying that close attention. What after I'd seen, I was like, oh, that was really good. And then, like, a while later, I found out he directed that. All right, so let's read this article. Ben Aldridge and Jonathan uh, Groff are set to star in M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. Joining Dave Bautista, Rupert Grint, and Nikki Amuka Bird, Shyamalan will write, direct, and produce the thriller for Universal Pictures. Per usual with anything related to Shyamalan, Plot details under lock and key. Set to open from February 3rd, 2023, Knock at the Cabin follows Old, which surpassed 90 million globally which summer uh, this summer and is Shyamalan's sixth film to open number one at the box, uh, the domestic box office. Aldridge stars in the series Pennerworth based on the DC Comics, uh, uh, based on Batman DC Comics. And the show recently was renewed for a third season. I don't see how. I watched the first season and that show was not very good, but I'm like, uh, whatever, it's fine. I, I, at this point, I'm just like, I, 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 I don't care. And we'll move to HBO Max after its first two seasons aired on Apex. Which that's another one. Nobody ever heard of Epix or whatever it was. I, I, I like had to search for that sucker to, to find it on the TV. Anyways, on the film sign, Aldrich will star alongside Jim Parsons to focus features, spoiler alert, a film adaptation of the best-selling memoir by Michael uh, Auxilio. That's nice. Uh, Groff, an Emmy and two-time Tony no Award nominee, is known for his starring role in David Fincher's Netflix series Mind Hunter, which uh, I love. Mind Hunter, and I like Groff. He's Jonathan Groff. He's he also does. Um, oh, it mentions it in here, but uh, he also does Frozen. But um, I like, and I like both these actors. I have nothing against them, but um, I uh, I do like Jonathan Groff, and that show Mind Hunter is amazing. I really wish they would do another season of that. It's just so good. I I'm not quite sure why they don't do another scene. I think it just might cost too much for them to do it, but we'll see. Anyways, okay. 
Um, he most recently co-starred opposite Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss in Matrix Resurrections. What a big dumpster fire that was. And is known as the voice of Kristoff and Sven in Disney's Frozen and Frozen 2. Groff also originated the role of King George III in Lin-Manuel Miranda's Pulitzer-winning Broadway uh, smash Hamilton, which uh, I did see. Uh, not live. I saw the, the movie that they put on Disney+. Plus. Um, Shyamalan also serves as showrunner for the TV series uh, Servant, uh, which is streaming its third season and is in production on its fourth and final season. The two-time uh, Oscar nominee most recently led the jury at the 2022 Berlin Film Festival. His 14 feature films have to date include The Sixth Sense, very good. Unbreakable, very good. Uh, the Village, eh, I actually liked The Village. I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, Split, Glass, and Old have uh, amassed more than 3 billion worldwide. Aldridge is represented and everybody else is, everybody's represented. I think they're playing a gay couple in this one, Ben Aldridge and Jonathan Groff. I thought I saw that uh, somewhere else. Maybe it was Twitter or something like that. And if they are good, you know, whatever. But I, I uh, something tells me that this, because like it said, uh, it's under luck and key the plot details. But I mean, I'm just assuming, and this is all me just going off on a whim here, that it's very much in, in, um, in the vein of that the visit movie where the two grandparents are really weird with the grandchildren and everything i won't give anything away about that movie if you haven't seen it but uh it i personally liked that movie and if it's in the vein of that movie then um i'm down with this um but I, i'll probably say i've i've seen all of them night Shyamalan's movies um some of them are real big duds like oh the happening was a big mess and then um the lady in the water what a piece man oh gosh i just didn't like any of those those two movies especially um and old was okay it wasn't bad but it wasn't like awe inspiring i was like eh, that's fine i'm I'm, I'm I'm like eh, i'm not feeling it anyways so, but yeah, uh, good for these two guys. I hope that, uh, you know, it all works out and everything. I mean, it'll work out, especially for Jonathan uh, Groff. He's great and everything. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what the, we see what happens and everything and see if it's a, if it's an M.I. Shyamalan uh, success or if it's just another dud, you know what I'm saying? So that is my second story of the week. So for my third and final story this week, this comes from The Hollywood Reporter. Well, it looks like Peter Dinklage has gotten a job. He could have got a job as that, one of those dwarves in uh in um go away uh in um in snow white but he had to go and like whine and complain about it because he's a little idiot but he's been cast in the hunger hunger games prequel um as uh kasaka high bottom um i have not read that book i literally it's like i have um uh there, there is a stat there's like three books and then comic books on my nightstand in my bedroom that I have to read through. Um, I'm, I, I just got through a, a Hawkman comic book. It, it's fabulous. Uh, I, I wish I wouldn't have slept on it and everything. Anyways, okay. So the Game of Thrones actor will play the Dean of the Academy in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Good for him. Lionsgate has cast Peter Dinklage, which by the way, I just want to say Peter Dinklage, acting wise, he's fantastic. He's so good. I, I find him, you know, um, I actually, I actually met him one time before he be like blew up. It was when he was in that uh, um, uh, Narnia movie. It was before he, like he blew up, and I was just like, "Hey, I loved you in uh, Station Agent." He was like, "Thank you," and everything, and like that was that was pretty much our interaction. I met him at Comic Con um, in two thousand eight, two thousand seven. Yeah, I was just like, oh, I love you. Love you in Station Agent. And he was like, thank you. And that was that was pretty much the end of our conversation. But then I, and then he went and did a, a, a like a panel. It was him and the the star of that movie. They did a, like a, the, the four kids that were the main kids. They weren't in that the, the panel or not. Anyways, it doesn't matter. All right. I don't know why I brought that up. It's so stupid. Uh, because I'm trying to name drop, duh. Anyways, so Lionsgate has cast Peter Dinklage as Kasaka Highbottom, Dean of the Academy in the upcoming prequel, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. What a big, long freaking name. Uh, uh, the adaptation of Susan Collins' novel will debut in theaters worldwide on November 17th, 2023. Lionsgate's four-film Hunger Games franchise had earned over $3 billion global, globally, 
when it wrapped in, up in 2014. And it is now looking to extend the lifespan with the adaptation of Colin's latest entry in the dystopian series. Which I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like they should have just ended it with those books because I mean like the last book wasn't bad but I'm me personally I'm just like if there's no hunger games in these books I'm not interested and this one will have a hunger games. So Dinklage will star in the film opposite Tom Blythe, who will play the young Cornelius Snow and Rachel Ziegler as tribute Lucy Gray uh, Baird Francis Lawrence who directed three of the four Hunger Games movies, Catching Fire, uh, Mocking J Part 1, and Mocking J Part 2, is back in the uh, Helmer's seat with franchise producer Nina Jacobs and her partner Brad Simpson back as producers. Now, I just have to say, out of all the Hunger Games movie, movies, Catching Fire is my favorite. And granted, um, uh, if you remember... Um, uh, what's her face the star of those movies jennifer lawrence she is a little asshole and she held up that movie because she wanted more money and everything and me i'm all like you sign a contract you're you got to be a person of your word but she's not she is a little harlot uh the devil's harlot and everything i'm joking calm down i don't care about uh, all that nonsense it's uh you know it's already said and done anyways uh lawrence is also producing collins Oh, producing Collins, Tim Pell, uh, Mario executive producers, Michael, uh, Michael Leslie wrote the latest draft of the screenplay. The prequel's long line from Lionsgate reads, years before he would become the tyrannical president of Pen M, 18-year-old Cornelius Snow is the latest hope for his fading lineage, a once proud family that has fallen from grace in a post-war capital with the 10th annual Hunger Games fast approaching, the young Snow is alarmed when he is assigned to mentor Lucy Gray Baird, the girl tribute from Impoverished District 12, which I don't like that. I wish they would stop focusing on District 12 like it's so gosh darn amazing and every uh, kid that comes out of there is just so freaking cool and everything. I'm just like, get out of my face with that nonsense. Um, I haven't read the book, but I'm pretty sure uh, uh, Lucy Gray Baird uh, wins. I'm pretty sure. I'll, 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 I'll bet my pinky on that. But after Lucy Gray commands all of Pan Am's attention by def uh, defiantly saying, of course she defiantly did something because that's what uh, 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 what's her face from the first uh, series did. She defied by firing her arrow at the judges. Anyways. Uh, but after Lucy Gray commands uh, defiantly singing during the reaping ceremony, uh, Snow thinks he might be able to turn the odds in their favor, uh, uniting their instincts for showmanship and a newfound political savvy. Snow and Lucy's uh, race against time to survive will ultimately reveal who is a songbird and a snake. Uh, Dean Highbottom who Dinklage is playing, uh, is one of the most powerful people in Snow's life. As the uh, officer and uh, vindictive face of the games, he sets the rules that will determine every aspect of Cornelius's fate. I'm thrilled that Peter will be bringing him to life, director Lawrence added in his statement. Dinklage most recently starred as a uh, Cyrano for director Joe Wright. Yeah, because that made no money. Nobody saw that movie. Um, his upcoming work includes Brothers, opposite Josh Brolin and Brendan Fraser. Uh, and She Came to Me, opposite Anne Hathaway and uh, Marci uh, Marissa Tomei uh, from writer-director Rebecca Miller. Good for him. And everybody's wrecked. Um, so it will be interesting to see uh, exactly what's going on there and everything. Um, I do, like I said, I, I will, we'll see what happens. I do wish nothing but the best for Peter Dinklage, even though he did come out against that Snow White movie and saying like, I'm pretty dumb stuff. It was his, his comments were just like completely um, ignorant and just, he just didn't know what he was talking about. And he just tried to sound all like, hoity-toity and shit and i'm like dude you don't you really like you don't know what you're talking about you talk about how the, the dwarves live in caves and stuff and i'm like no they don't no they don't you didn't see that movie I'm like i'm pretty sure you didn't read the the story and everything of snow white it's it's pretty freaking bleak and but i'm pretty sure disney will make it happy and stuff but anyways uh good for him 
I do think he's a talented actor. And again, I wish nothing but the best for people. All right, guys. So those are my three stories for this week. Tell me, what do you think about this? How do you feel about Adam Scott joining the cast of uh, Madam Web for Sony? Do you think this movie is going to be good or everything? Uh, who do you think he's going to play? I don't know if the movie is going to be good. I mean, if the script is good, I'll I'll give it mad props and everything because I'm I'm definitely one of those people that believes like if a movie has good writing visually it doesn't need to it doesn't need to be visually stimulating for me to enjoy it it just needs to be written well um and uh, you know i've always thought that and everything but who do you think adam scott is playing are you like me and you think he's just playing the love interest i don't know um, madam webb's love interests in the comic books because i don't know that much about her the most i know about her was from that spider-man uh cartoon from the 90s love that show it's so good i watch that with my kids sometimes they they enjoy it too anyways um, but tell me what you guys think about that um uh, how do you feel about ben aldrich and jonathan uh groff joining uh the cast of knock at the cabin by m night Shyamalan? um do you think this is going to be good um you know do you have hopes for this movie or do you think that uh m night Shyamalan has really lost his touch these days you know with just the fact that he's i don't know like I, I don't know. I like M. Night Shyamalan. It's just sometimes he, when he misses, he really misses. Like, no joke. Like, I'm all like, man, mm, that was not good. Um, yeah, and what are your, do you think it's going to be in the vein of, you know, his movies where there's like, well, all his movies kind of have a twist ending, but do you think it's going to be in the vein of the visit with those grandparents and everything? And that did have a twist at the end. Um, um, but, uh, or do you think it's going to be more like a, like a sixth sense where it's all like, you know, very like, uh, you know, um, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but uh, yeah. And then finally, how do you feel about Peter Dinklage joining the cast of the Hunger Games prequel, uh, A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Um, and he is being playing uh, Kasaka uh, Highbottom, the dean or, of you know the school. What? I, I don't know. I have to look. I, I, I need to read those, that book. I, I really do. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, tell me what you guys think about all of this, um, you know, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button, you know, I won't mind if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week on my Week in Review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.